So cryptocurrencies are a really big deal right now. And if you've looked into it, you've probably found that buying cryptocurrency is a really intimidating process. And the cool thing is you don't actually have to buy cryptocurrencies to invest in cryptocurrency. Here are three ways to invest in crypto without buying crypto. So buying cryptocurrencies, especially your first time, can be pretty complicated. You have to manage your keys, you have to manage your wallet, you have to worry about things like hackers or losing those keys. Um, but there is an easier way. You'll often hear it compared to the gold rush. You had people going out in the desert to spend all day digging for gold, but you also had people who were selling picks and shovels to the miners without really getting their hands dirty. They're benefiting from the gold rush without going into the desert. Similarly, there's ways to invest in cryptocurrencies without actually buying the cryptocurrencies, managing it, holding it in your wallet, and uh, managing those keys as well. So one way to do this is actually to invest in traditional ETFs. There are ETFs out there that are made up of companies that operate within the blockchain world. It tracks companies that have something to do with cryptocurrency, they're developing blockchain technologies, and when you invest in these companies, you're benefiting from the rise in popularity of cryptocurrency and blockchain technologies. If they continue to rise in popularity, these companies stand to benefit, and by investing in them, you could benefit as well. Uh, and the best place to look for these is right there in your brokerage account. You can search for blockchain ETFs, see what comes up. Um, if your brokerage doesn't have this feature, you can just search Google and you're gonna get a long list of ETFs made up of blockchain or cryptocurrency based companies. And the second way to do this is through these new financial products that are designed to track the price of cryptocurrency. These are things like the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust or the Osprey Bitcoin Trust. And if you are an investor and you're familiar with brokerage accounts, this could be a potentially good entry point. These look and feel a lot like mutual funds, but they're giving you that exposure to cryptocurrency. One thing to note is they tend to have a lot higher fees than typical mutual funds or ETFs uh, and substantially higher fees than owning cryptocurrency yourself. And a third way to do this is to identify and invest in companies that have some level of exposure to cryptocurrencies. So this might be something like PayPal that offers cryptocurrency payments, but it's not their entire business. Uh, it could also be a company that holds cryptocurrencies on its balance sheet. Um, it's widely reported that Tesla holds a lot of Bitcoin on its balance sheet. So if Bitcoin rises in price, that benefits Tesla as well. Um, and the way to find this is basically just to do a search online. Lots of financial media covers who's carrying cryptocurrency on its balance sheet. And then the last option is to look at pure play crypto companies. So that's going to be something like Coinbase, whose entire operation is cryptocurrency. And if they're a public company, you can invest in them just like any other stock and still get that exposure to cryptocurrencies. And all of these are individual stocks, so you can find them in your brokerage account. Um, I should note that I'm not a financial advisor and uh, investing in individual stocks as opposed to broad diversified index funds and ETFs does carry a bit more risk. And just like any investment, there's some downsides to these approaches. First is you're probably going to pay some pretty high fees, especially if you're using those new products that track the price of cryptocurrencies. Like any business, they need to make money. So they're going to charge a pretty high management fee if you opt for that. And another downside is you're not necessarily going to see the high gains that people have seen by investing directly in cryptocurrencies. You're spreading your investment out. It's diversified. That innately means you're not going to see high volatility, which could mean upside gains. But there are some really great benefits to these approaches. If you already know your way around a brokerage account and investing in stocks or index funds, then this is going to be really familiar to you and it's going to be really convenient. Um, and then the other part of this is you're really adding diversification in when you're using these approaches to invest in cryptocurrency. You're not putting all of your eggs in one basket, so to speak. And then the last part is that you're lowering your volatility as well. So you're, like you said, you might not see those sky high gains, but you're also protecting the downside by achieving that diversification. Now for all of these strategies, it's important to remember that they have their pros and cons. Some are more convenient, some are less volatile, but if you are well-versed in investing in stocks and using brokerage accounts, then all of these strategies are going to be more familiar. So if you're looking for a level of exposure in cryptocurrencies without diving in head first, this could be a good place to start. I'm Chris Davis, a nerd wallet investing writer, and this is just a quick reminder that all investments are inherently risky, and whatever you choose to invest in is personal to you and your financial situation. If you learned something today, hit the like button and subscribe.